Hello and welcome to the guided reading lesson for this week, our last guided reading lesson for this period of home learning. Today we are learning to work out the meaning of new words in context, which sounds very grand, but all it means is when you're reading you often come across words you don't know. Um, that happens to me still as an adult when I'm reading at home. There are often words in text I'm reading that I'm not quite sure what they mean. And I don't always want to run off and get a dictionary and look, look at the words up. So there are things we can do to help us to work out what a word means, more or less, while we're reading. And then we can always um, check in a dictionary if we want to later, or if there's one word in particular that we're really interested to know. So there are two different things we can do, or two main things we can do. One is to use the words around the word to see if there are any clues to help us to understand it. And the other is to break the word down into sounds or words that you do know. So there's a video link on the website um, for today, for the whole week. Um, and if you watch, it's a small, B it's just a short BBC Bite Size video. If you watch that video, it gives you a little bit more information about using these strategies to help you work out the meaning of unknown words. So watch that first, if you like, pause my video and watch that one, or watch it when you finish listening to me. So let's have a look at the first of those strategies. Here are some sentences, and the words written in black might be words that aren't so familiar to you, that you might not know when you're reading. So we need to look at the words around them for clues, or break the words down into words we do know, or sounds we know. The car was hindered by the snow on the road, so we couldn't get to school. So if I look at the words around it, it's telling me that we couldn't get to school because the snow on the road stopped our car from getting through. So that implies that hindered means something like the car was stopped by the snow, the car was um, disadvantaged in some way by the snow, or prevented by the snow. So even if I don't have an exact understanding of what the word hinders mean, I could go and look it up later in the dictionary, I understand enough to understand a sentence. The, third, the second one, sorry, there was a minuscule speck of dirt on my trainers, but I couldn't even see it. Now there's two things here that help me. One is I couldn't even see it. So is it massive, this speck of dirt, or is it tiny? Already we're thinking it must be tiny, and also, this bit here, think of words which have that at the beginning, minute, minute as well, isn't it? They're spelt the same way, um, mini. So that gives me an idea that we're describing something that's very, very tiny. The last one, it was so serene sitting on the quiet beach with waves lapping at the shore and the gentle breeze blowing through the palm trees, I almost fell asleep. So how do we think it felt sitting on the beach that day? Was it really noisy? Was it really chaotic and busy? I'm guessing it was calm, peaceful, mellow, relaxing, calming, and that's why I almost fell asleep. It was quiet, the waves were lapping at the shore, the, the breeze was gently blowing, oh doesn't this sound lovely? So serene, I'm presuming, means something like calm, quiet, peaceful, relaxing. So you're getting the hang of it. So, um, something else that helps us, like we were talking about minuscule, having the prefix mini in it. Um, we have lots of words, don't we, that are made from root words. If you think about the root word appear, how many other words can you make from that using prefixes at the beginning or suffixes at the end? Have a little think now. Let's see what we've got on the board. We've got appear, disappear, disappearance. So this makes it negative, like not appear. This makes it a noun, disappeared in the past, disappearing now. Reappear, appear again. Reappearance, reappeared, reappearing. Those are all that I could think of, but there might be more. This is what we call a word family. So those words can help us when we're reading as well, if we don't understand the new word. So we've got a text today on the website. There is a separate um, task sheet that you can open. 
and the text is all about Robin Hood and Little John. I'm not actually going to read it all out to you now, so you can read it out uh, or just read it to yourself once this video has finished. So there are some questions underneath the text on the website. There are six questions in total and there are also some answers. So let's just have a look at a couple of the questions together before you start work on your own. So once you've read the whole text, question one says, sorry, that's uh, Miss Hill's emails. <laughs> question one says, use a dictionary to find the word ethereal. Can you write a definition for it in your own words? So again, before you use a dictionary, look at the sentence and see if you can work out what the word might mean by yourself. So I might not just look at the sentence the word is in, I might look at the one before and the one afterwards as well. They spent, this is Robin Hood and Little John, they spent the next few hours trudging through the gloom of the forest on their way back to Nottingham. Mist hung about the ground at knee height, giving the forest an ethereal feel. Robin's friend, Will, turned to him and confessed quietly he wasn't, up, he wasn't happy about the uncomfortable silence which enveloped the woods. So we know that the forest is gloomy. We know that it's silent and it's got an uncomfortable silence about it. We know there's mist hanging around the ground at knee height. And the mist specifically is what gives the forest an ethereal feel because there's this mist hanging around the ground at knee height. So have a guess, what do you think ethereal might mean? For me, mist hanging around the ground at knee height feels almost like it could be a bit magical, a bit mystical, a bit eerie, uh, a bit otherworldly, a bit ghostly. Those are all ideas that come into my head. And if you've got ideas similar to that, all of those could be possibilities. So when you do question one, write down some of your own ideas first, and then you could have a look at the answers, couldn't you? Or have a look in a dictionary yourself first. Okay, let's have one more question together. Let's look at question four together now. Outlaw is a compound word made of two smaller words. So a compound word is just when we put two other words together to make a new word, like alarm clock, post box, those kinds of words. So outlaw is a compound word. What do you think it means? Where is it in the text as well? Let's have a look at it in the text as well. They reached the river crossing just after dawn had broken and found a sun-dappled place to sit, eat and rest a while before crossing the water into the part of the forest inhabited by outlaws. So that doesn't give me that many clues about what outlaws could be. I know that they are in the forest, but they could be anybody, couldn't they? So outlaw might give me more of an idea. Out and law. I wonder what it could mean. Outlaw. Does it mean maybe? Sorry, the phone's ringing. I'm just going to ignore it because it's not my classroom anyway. I'll I'll um, talk that out in a minute. Um, do you know what? I am going to answer it. Just a minute. Hello. She isn't. I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of doing a video. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Sorry about that. I thought it was better just to answer it than to have it ringing while I'm doing the video. Somebody looking for Miss Hills who isn't in here at the moment. Okay, so um, for me, I would be starting to think maybe it's somebody who lives or acts outside of the law or is out of the law in some way. Maybe they don't follow the rules, maybe they don't follow the law. I don't know. Have a think about it, write down an idea, and then you can check the answers later. So, have a go at that today. There are six questions in total, and as I said, the answers are all there for you on the daily learning page and yeah that's it enjoy okay bye see you soon